Hi everybody, it's Meg from Books Off the Beaten Path. Get those specs off so we don't have the glare. I have a guest with me today, my very good friend, Michelle. Michelle, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Michelle Chapetta. I am a uh, writer, editor. I work with Two Birds Author Services. We do developmental edits all the way through proofreading and formatting and stuff for indie authors. Right, so if you have a book that you're working on or that you finished and you're ready to get published or query or self-publish or whatever, this is the girl right here. And I will post all of her contact information in the um, show notes down below. So the name of our episode today is gonna be Champagne and Classics. And so we have, we're gonna do a little day drinking, little day drinking. Just a little bit. Little bit. <laughs> so, it's a screw top champagne bottle. Quality. There's nothing but quality from Meg off the book. Be, books off the beaten path. I haven't even had any champagne yet. At least it's uh, bubbling up. So. And it's pink, which is my favorite color. So that's why I had to get it. Yeah, look pink. at that. Isn't that pretty? So what we're going to do is you know what happens is you get around with a bunch of friends and you start talking classic books, right? Right? Oh, everybody does. Everybody <laughs> does this. And you think to yourself, gosh, I haven't read what I should have read. I regret not reading the classics when I was in school. I should read the classics. And we're here to tell you there's a lot you don't need to read. You sort of can have a sense of it, but you, there's a yeah, lot you don't true. need to read. So what I've done here is I've made three little cards. So the first card is when we absolutely advocate that you read the book, that you physically read the book. The second card is watch the movie. Now that's going to stand for a couple of different things because if there is not a movie adaptation of the book, it basically means cliff noted, Wikipedia it. Right, exactly. Right? Find the basics. Find the basics. And then the last one is don't bother, don't waste your time. There will be spoilers on here, so if you don't want to know spoilers about these age-old books, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't, <laughs> but um, maybe, you know, maybe, 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 but we're going to see how often we agree and how often we disagree. So, Michelle, as my guest, you may go first. What classic did you bring? Okay, I'm going to so, hide my cards okay. so you don't know what I'm seeing yet, and I'm going to yes. have a, ship, a sip of champagne. Okay, so I went ahead... And just, I, I did it. I brought The Catcher in the Rye by J.E. Salinger. Okay, let me look at my cards. Yep. I've selected a card. Oh my God, that's... Is it terrible champagne? <laughs> it's got a wang. It's got a wang to it. We'll but have to add something to it in a little bit. I guess so. Okay, ready? Yep. Reveal. Oh, we agree. Okay. Now, Michelle, it was your book. Why do you say don't bother? Yeah, I know this is going to... Um, shake up some some trees here, but uh, so the, and that's what yeah. I was really hoping for was course, for people yeah. to unsubscribe and everything like that because they're pissed off about rage, what... <laughs> rage <laughs> subscribe <laughs> to uh, something you had to read in high school. Um, honestly, I know that the, there are people who really love this book. I actually just I hated it. It's it's one of the books that I remember reading in high school and just being rage frustrated that I had to read. I think. Um, you know, I did not relate at all to the main character. I uh, don't like him. He's just hard to really engage at all with that character for any length of time. And it's, how many pages is it? Was that 210, 212? Too long. And too to long. With that and aren't you always a little suspect of people like, oh, I loved Catherine the Rhyme. Because I'm always like, did you read the same book I read? Yeah. Because I did not think that he was a nice person. No, exactly not. No. no. And I did not, I don't love reading about not nice people. Right. You know, I just don't love that. Yeah, and you, you can tell that he's just angry and depressed and whatever. It's, just, it's hard to sit with a character that long. That long. Who's going through that stuff. Okay. You know, so. Fair enough. Okay, my turn. Meg's turn. All right, okay, we're take... ready? Yeah, sip of this terrible champagne. Go ahead. Give it a sip. Tell me if you think it has wine. No, it's... Oh, no. 
Okay. It, costs, it tastes what it costs like, you know? There you that's go. That's, that's the best compliment. <laughs> okay, I'm going with Jane Eyre. Okay. And I'm also going to add special Jane Eyre in a beautiful copy. Yeah, that is really a pretty copy. Isn't that really pretty? I have more than one, but mm -hmm. really pretty copy. Mm -hmm. Jane Eyre. So grab your card. Okay. Let me look at mine. Okay. I... I'm ready. This is going to be a two card. It's going to be a two card response. Okay. okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Ready? Yep. Go. Oh, we disagree. But what's, what's your second what's card? What's my second card is watch the movie with Michael Fassbender. Okay. Because gotcha. it's Michael Fassbender. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's easy to watch in pretty much anything, isn't he? Yes, and it's a good ad adaptation. I mean, you get really everything that you need to know from the book. But I think reading the book, you it just, I was just lost in it. I mean, I just thought that the writing style was so beautiful and the way she describes things is so beautiful. And it's just like, I don't know. I just sort of felt changed, moved, significantly mm. moved after reading the words. Why do you say watch the movie? Okay, so I think that both of the Bronte sisters really do a good job with things like description. Wouldn't you say? Like giving you yes. the, the evocative feel of the setting. Right. And stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I'm just not really a fan so much of their characters, but I think that they're an important, uh, uh, th their work is important to understand, especially if, if you're into writing romances to have those yeah, character tropes. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, so that's you need to at least, point. at least watch the movie, kind of know the tropes and see where they've developed. But, um, but you, know, you wouldn't take the time. It's a longie. It's, it's a, a long, long book. It's a long book. It's a minute. long book. Yeah. And there's a good section of it where nothing really significant happens so which you is typical have to for get that. through that you yeah get don't you that. say that's typical for that like, yes what is it 18th 19th century victorian yes. Kind of literature yes yeah so. that's yeah heavy on the foreplay yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i love it okay, okay your okay, turn so, all right so, i gotta hide my cards yep all right so i'm going with ralph ellison's invisible man okay and ready? Reveal the cards. Yep. Oh, drama, drama. Don't bother. Okay. Okay. So this will make sense when you understand that I um, also like Faulkner, which will come up in a minute, probably. Okay. But I, I really enjoy um, books that have that sort of stream of consciousness kind of feel that are a little bit off balance, which certainly. Uh, Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man is. Mm -hmm. Now I, remember some of these things she's saying when you're at that next party. Right, exactly. Ask me Ask me about Ralph Ellison. Mm, that's right, because now you'll know. <laughs> Over your pink champagne. Over your pink crappy champagne. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, um, if, you're, if you're wanting to get a flavor for um, American literature in general, African American literature in particular, this is a good one to pick up and read through. It'll take you a while, but he pretty much covers, you know, up until publication of the book, which I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know if I can actually read the year that it was published, but he pretty much takes you through 1947. Um, black experience in America. It, uh, uses a lot of characters that are you know, tropes for, or, or stand-ins for famous historical people, whether it's W.E.B. Du Bois or, um, you know, Booker T. Washington and all of these others and, and kind of has characters in it who are, who want slaves, telling their, you know, kids and grandkids how to act and, and trying to figure out where do you fit in. Um, I think it's a really great thing to have under your belt, just understanding what that experience has been like for many people in this country. Okay, well then I'm gonna have to change because I, I was, now. I'm gonna have to change and go with read the book because you gave me some good reasons to read the book. I just was never interested. Yeah, it's, it's, I can see that a lot of people would find it. And again, it's long, 
it's pretty thick. Uh, and you do have to sort of be patient with it a little bit, but there's a lot of interesting things that happen too. I mean, there's, um, there's fighting, there's drama of the communist parties involved in there and all kinds of stuff. It's really a pretty crazy read once you get into it. So oh, okay. cool. cool. So now I will, well, I will try to read that one. Can I borrow that one? Sure. I'll put it over here. There you go. Mission Maybe accomplished. Maybe before I get to it. Mission accomplished. Okay, my turn. We ready? Yes. Okay, I'm going with, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Anna Karina by Leo Tolstoy. Okay. Okay, you got your card? Yeah, this is debatable though. Hmm. Thinking hard. I am. Thinking I'm hard over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. Okay, you ready? Oh, okay. okay. Here's why I think you should read the book. I think you should read the book because it's another one that is beautifully written. And I like beautiful words and I think it's beautifully written. I think that you get more of the relationships. I just think you get more out of the relationships in the book hmm. than you do with the movies. Like there's this whole thing of this guy who's a Fair farmer, enough. who's like kind of like a socialist. And then there's a whole section of the book that's sort of about him. And that's really interesting and stuff like that. The movie with Kira Knightley was good. I have to say that it was good. But I just think, you know, it's just, it's a better read than it can ever be interpreted in a, in a movie because you've got so many characters and so many layers of each character. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Interesting, yeah. Why do you think? Um, I have not really been able to get past the first couple chapters. <laughs> it's guilty. <laughs> um, but... You know, I think fair enough, like, it's something that people probably need to at least be familiar with, which is why I was saying watch the movie, but, um... You'll, so get, you'll get the main points from the movie, but if you really want to delve into... A lot of characters who are not really covered or something like yes, that. Yes. Then read fair the enough. book. Okay. Read the book. Yeah, maybe I'll try it again. Maybe you will. She's not going to try it. Never know. All right, so is it my turn? It's your turn. All right, let's see. Um... Let's go ahead and do... Now, this is sort of a stand-in. It's Herman Melville, Billy Budd, and other stories. Okay. Uh, I wanted to kind of really talk about Herman Melville in general, and in particular Moby Dick, the great American novel, because that's what people call it, so that's a classic. Okay. What do we think? I'm. This is an easy one for me. Okay. So I'm going to say don't bother with Moby Dick with sort of a caveat. That's, I know, I will go with that. Um, and I've long had, I have not ever been able to make it all the way through Moby Dick, not because it's not fantastic, but because I keep seeing SpongeBob SquarePants every time. <laughs> that, because I think that Mr. Crab is Captain Ahab, and I think that SpongeBob is Ishmael, and I just, for some reason, that just comes up all the time. And the daughter being the whale, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I just always think of, and now you will too, Thanks. of SpongeBob SquarePants. But I just think that, you know, it, it's oftentimes you'll find an author where they've got that one book mm -hmm. and you just love it. And then you try to find something else and you're like, yeah, what happened? Yeah. And I think that Moby Dick is a definite read. I love Moby Dick. I think Moby Dick is a tough read for a lot of people. Oh, really? See, I didn't think... I thought it was very... Uh, in, in part because it's not what people expect. No. Um, there's, I would say that. There's like half of the book is... I was thinking about The Perfect Storm. Did you ever read that book? I didn't read that book, but I... Are you movie. talking about the part where they're talking about here's this kind of whale and here's that kind of whale? Yes, that yeah. was tough. Yeah. See, there's... That's the thing about Moby Dick is half of it is a story about... A fictionalized account, essentially, of... An actual whaling ship, whale attack, um, and you know, kind of legendary. This whale just totaled the ship, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other part of the book is all this stuff about what the whaling industry was like in Boston back in 1800 or 1700 or whatever. It's taken, yes. you know, I don't terrible with dates, but I think what happens is that people either like one part of the book or they like the other. They like the story about Ahab and Ishmael and all that stuff and they don't like the whaling 
you know, history lesson, or they like the history lesson, and they don't really like the um, fiction story. The Ahab story, Captain Ahab. Yeah, yeah right. So I, I would say if you're going to read some Herman Melville to see if you like his stuff and you haven't picked up his short story book, uh, I was talking with my husband about this actually, he really was saying, and I thought this was a really good observation, that uh, Bartleby Scrivener is sort of a great old-fashioned version of Office Space, the movie, where there's essentially this, this guy who loses his job, but he doesn't actually leave. He's still at work. <laughs> you know, so it's not, I'm not familiar with that at all. Right. So that's, the, it's, it's entertaining. It's interesting. And that's a short story in there? It's a short story in his short story collection. Um, Billy Budd is also in this. It's, if I had to pick one or the other, I'd probably pick Bartleby. Um, and if you mention that at cocktail parties and people are like, oh, I love Billy Bit Dick, you can say, well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in the short stories like Billy Bob and Scrivener's. Yeah. Whatever. And you will get so many points for that because you, everyone will think you're just way, you're, you know, I don't a have time. Fan. Yeah, yeah, I don't have time for Moby Dick, but I want to delve into the really obscure stuff. <laughs> the, the stuff you've never heard of is what I'm reading. Okay. My turn. You ready? I am. Okay. I'm going with A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Ooh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Not for me. All right. Ready? ready? Yay. And not only am I going to say read the book, but I'm going to say read the book immediately. If you haven't read the book yet, you need to go out, hopefully this weekend, and get the book. It is incredible. It, it's about, in case you're unfamiliar, it's about the French Revolution. And it is a far, far better thing I do today than I have done on any other days. You'll figure that out when you read the book. It's just wonderful. It's just, it's full of description, which I love. It's full of what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do and how those change when you're in the middle of a revolution mm -hmm. and just, just loved it. Lots of drama. Lots of drama. Lots just of memorable characters. Yes. So. What did you think? Oh, I, I really love that book. Um, I, you know, Madame Defarge is a character that will always live in my mind. Yes. You know, uh, and you know, I, I we're talking spoilers, right? So spoilers. Is she the one with the needlepoint? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so she's sort of, you know, the... the she's recording the, a lot of stuff. Yeah, the peasant kind of quietly um, recording all the people that they're going to essentially behead, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all their crimes. There's uh, mistaken identities because two people... Some completely different people look exactly alike. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. There's um, essentially an unhappy lawyer who doesn't know what to do with his life. and you know. It's just a wonderful, wonderful adventure book. There is the part about these carriages. She, she mentioned all the really highbrow stuff, and I'm going to talk about... There's a part about these carriages being stuck in the mud. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like it's like, just... you're actually there. Yeah. It's written so well. And the carriage is running over people. Yes, because, running over people you know, because why not? Right. Why not? And so, I'm glad they made a law against that because I would do that. <laughs> you, know, you know I would. Well, so, you know. That's true. Okay, your turn. Would you yeah. like a little more bad champagne? Sure. I'm going to top her off. Um, I would go. say too that with Tale of Two Cities, I have never seen a movie adaptation that I've really loved. I haven't either. So, I haven't either. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. What am I picking? Um, all right, let's go with William Faulkner. Okay, ready? Yep. Now we're gonna definitely have some disagreements oh, here. I know. Which William Faulkner is that? Just any this William one? Faulkner? Well, this one is light in August, but it's probably not the one that people have. Sound and the Fury is the one. Sound and the Fury. Uh, you know, he's got a bunch of short stories. Rose for Emily, you probably had to write, read that one in high school. I think um, I did. So, but. Okay. Before, a lot light in August for a specific reason, but we'll just kind of do William Faulkner in general for, at first. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. 
Oh. We both said read the book. Okay. But I want to quantify mine. Read the book because he is an important American writer, but don't expect to enjoy it. <laughs> so just know yeah. that. <laughs> William, William Faulkner is uh, one of those authors you'll either love him or you will hate him. He wrote in Stream of Consciousness, which uh, I did not bring any James Joyce with me, but again, he would also probably be on the list of people either love him or hate him for that same thing. Stream of Consciousness is essentially writing, trying to mimic thoughts and impressions and stuff. So there's not a lot of periods or capital letters. And I have never logic. really found any of those that I've enjoyed. So maybe I'm just already prejudiced it, against yeah, I mean, that. It's, it's definitely a style that is, like I said, I think people either really enjoy the process of kind of deciphering it or they just really hate the, the struggle of that. The reason I recommend Light in August specifically is I think it's a really interesting book um, about a character who, in the South, who doesn't really know what his background is. Mm -hmm. Is he white? Is he black? Should that matter? Uh, this is a kind of an interesting read for that particular topic. Uh, I happen to really love William Faulkner in general, but I know that a lot of people, you know, like Meg, because we've talked about this, think of things like sound and the sound and the fury and it's it's hard you know like that particular book is not only stream of consciousness but it's um it's one event essentially or one family story from four different points of view and one of the points yeah. of view is a um severely mentally challenged son of the family who's like an adult but he's got an IQ of like maybe a five or seven year old and so you're trying to understand the confused thoughts of this of this person person and that's really difficult I still really um, think though that you can't consider yourself really versed in the classics unless you read some Faulkner yeah you at least to be familiar with sort of to be familiar with stuff. it and yes. I don't know are there even any movie adaptations um Actually, that's a good question. I don't know if there's ever been an adaptation of Light in August. Um, there probably really haven't been too many of his that have been adapted. I'm looking at the list of things that are here. You know, Absalom. Absalom is also one that I, I like, but that's a tough read. Um, he's got a lot of short story collections. I just have to tell one quick funny mm -hmm. Faulkner story. When I was in high school, we had to read a short story, and I don't remember what it was called, and it was about these people that lived on a farm, and the two boys wanted to go off to World War II. Is this making any recalling or anything like that? And the mother yeah. really didn't want them to go. And so the mother said, and I will never forget this, the mother said that um, she just wants to be she wants that part of the world to take care of itself and leave her part of the world alone. And my English teacher said, but you know, that, that wouldn't have happened. It mm -hmm. would have changed her part of the world too. Because, and my teacher was kind of nutty. She was like, because, you know, the Nazis were trying to take over the world and they would have, you know, really infiltrated America and everything like that. And I just remember sitting there thinking, not that farm. They would have let that farm alone because they would have been like, whoa, you people are way too boring. <laughs> yeah. You know, everything that Faulkner did um, was sort of about the South's struggle to figure itself, itself out. That's true. Antebellum and postbellum kind of thing. So I would have said that's probably an analogy for um, what happens in the South. You'd like the... Southerners wanted us to leave them alone. Well, they want us to leave them alone, but... Not going to happen. So. We Northerners didn't. Yeah. I consider myself a Northern, though. I mean, you're definitely a uh, Northern. Yeah, I am actually a, from Connecticut, so I'm a Connecticut Yankee. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I'm an okie dokie, but I don't know. I've just never really been that into the Southern kind of home style grits thing. Yeah. Okay, is it my turn? Yes, it is. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, we're probably going to fight over Tolkien, this, Tolkien, Lord of the Rings. Okay. And this is the big one. Okay, so this is going to be a two-part one for me. Oh, okay. All right, as the one part one for me. You ready? Okay, we're going to start with read the book. Okay. And then I'm going to get into watch the movie. So we're okay. sort of on the same page. We're sort of on the same page. The reason I say watch the movie is because this was really not that quick. 
And when I say not that quick, in the movie, when it starts out in the very first movie in the trilogy, um, the Baggins, Bilbo Baggins, is planning on leaving, and he leaves that night. In the book, it takes him 14 freaking years to get ready to leave. And that's a and, hobbit. And that's a hobbit. And there's a lot of singing. They do a lot of singing. These mm -hmm. damn hobbits are singing all the time. And it's hard to read singing. But watching the movie, who was it that did the movie? Who was the director? Uh, Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson, I thought, did an excellent job. And you're going to get everything you need from those movies. You're going to get the orcs. You're going to get the, you know, the struggles with the hobbits. You're going to get um, Aragon. You're going to get the elves. You're going to get everything that you need to know. You don't need to do this to yourself. Stop. Save yourself now. <laughs> don't do it to yourself. Okay, Michelle. All right. So, two-part answer. One part. Part one, watch the movie. Yes, definitely. They are, they are really well adapted. Uh, the action is fantastic. The casting is fantastic. They're beautifully done movies. I think they do a really good job of capturing the feel of the, of the book, the mm -hmm. story, and everything. Um, definitely well worth watching. I watch, rewatch them often because I like them. The reason I say read the book, or at least read part of the book, uh, I think that... The Fellowship of the Ring is probably the strongest of the... The three. The three. That in terms was my of favorite reading, movie. In terms of reading as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you get some really good scenes and entertainment and stuff like that. One, one of the things that I recommend with Tolkien is at least reading part of it so that if you're a writer, you understand how to write a scene with subtext. He was, you know, his... Guy, his... she's so smart. I would never say that. I'm giving you lots of smiles here. She's very um, smart. That's very funny. Thank you. Um, sweet. And I'm not even drunk yet. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? You're... Isn't that nice? Mm. Normally she wouldn't get these kind of compliments. Right, but... right. It's such cheap champagne. <laughs> wow. Um, but, you know, really seriously... He was a master of letting the story, you know, be at the surface and have more underneath it, in part because he was trying to mimic how mythologies are made. Uh, you know, and when you read myths, there's a lot of that surface action and then there's meaning underneath. And so there are some really great scenes where they're short, they're to the point, but when you start to think about the characters, that's what Peter Jackson delved into, you know, like the the brothers, Faramir and Boromir. Oh. Like when God. when Boromir to... dies, he it, does die. It's Shakespearean, I think. Yes, and you know, like it's tragic in part because when you, this is like, like what's missing from the movie and it's interesting in the book that, you know, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna geek out on J.R. Tolkien for a minute, but it's pretty clear that Faramir later on is starting to tell about his experience Bormir and going after the ring and all of that stuff, it becomes clear that both of them were having dreams about the ring, but Faramir way more so than his brother. And Faramir is probably the one who's supposed to go and be part of the fellowship. Oh, but see, she's very Faramir smart. was a friend of Gandalf. And his dad was like, I don't want Gandalf messing in with my politics, so I'm going to send my older son who's going to do what I want. Mm hmm. And the tragedy of Boromir's death is then on top of it that it's his dad's fault for making Boromir go on the journey. When he wasn't Faramir. meant to be there and you knew. Yeah. I mean, you could even get that from the movie. He wasn't meant to be there. Fair enough. That's but true. Anyway. That's true. Well, that was an interesting talk about yeah. Tolkien. Surprise. Okay. Between, was it Haiti? Anyway. From the Caribbean, you know, the French had a lot of colonies down there. Mm -hmm. There was a very short period where uh, people who were of slave descent, but, you know, had a, a child by a white Frenchman, those k kids could actually do more and have more freedoms and stuff like that, regardless of who they were, or how they were born, didn't matter. And so his story is really interesting in part because he achieved a lot 
during that short period where somebody like him could. Mm -hmm. And then the French slammed down again. I think it was probably when Napoleon came into power, slammed down on things again and wanted uh, slavery back in place again and, and very destructive stuff. But it's pretty interesting that that guy was really famous and then his son became super famous for, you know. It does sound interesting. Yeah, so. So I'll have to look that one, the black, the black count. Yeah, I believe that's what it's called. Okay. I'll look it up for you later. All right, my turn. Okay, you ready? I do, am. Do, 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 do. This isn't really a book. Well, we're gonna go with the book. Hamlet, ah. the tragedy of Hamlet. All right, so I'm gonna go duo again. I'm gonna go duo too. Okay. I bet, I bet we have the same duo. Yep. Okay. We do. Exactly. Exactly the same. Okay, so let me just give you, now first off, if you're, if you're going to read Shakespeare, you really only need to read one of each. You need to read a tragedy, and you need to read a comedy, and you mm -hmm. need to read one sonnet, and then you're good, no, right? This, you no don't have plays. to. No Richard the Third. I consider that a tragedy. Okay, so a history okay. play. Okay. A history Fair play. Fair enough. Fair enough. You need to read one of each. You need to read one of each. And, you know, if you read Hamlet, you've got pretty much everything in there. You've got the court intrigue. You've got the madness. Mm -hmm. You've got the family intrigue. You've got the supernatural. You've yep. got all that kind of stuff, and it's all here. Now, here's my caveat on that. I'll show you you know, where I've underlined things, everything like that. I used to carry this, and this is my hand, hand to God truth. If you don't think I'm a true nerd, you will now. <laughs> I used to carry this in my car. And I would just, you know, and when I was like in high school and everything like that, and I was sad or depressed or something mm -hmm. like that, I would read it simply for the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. um, I have long been... A William Shakespeare, if he was alive today, I would so be dating him. Um, <laughs> I would. I would so be fan dating girl. him. I'm such a fangirl. But if you're going to read it, get the one with the footnotes because it just makes a big difference. And then the watch the movie is there's only one movie you should watch. Oh, okay. We might it's, be debating here. But it's the Kenneth Branagh hour because he does it from the original text. He does the whole thing. Because a lot of it is annotated, like, you know, the, when the players come and everything mm -hmm. like that. They don't show the little play they put on and everything like that. So you're talking... Well, thank you guys for watching. I would love it if you hit that subscribe button or left me a like. Or please give me a comment because the comments I'm getting are fantastic. I wanted to say hello to my new subscribers. I got 12 new subscribers this last week. So, awesome. woo! That's right. Moving on up there in the algorithm. So if you want to see more uh, videos where I have a guest, more videos where I have Michelle, more videos where we play games or just drink, and <laughs> just let me know. Not and, that it's not going to be just a drinking video. There's going to be books Well, involved. you don't know. <laughs> if that's what they want, we'll, well see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.